Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a very special edition of our Data Movers podcast. It's part of our Greener Data series. So welcome, welcome. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO of JSA. And along with me is my fabulous co-host, Mr. Evan Kerstell, top B2B social influencer. Hey, Ev. Hey, good to see you again. And welcome, everyone, to Data Movers, where we sit down with the most interesting and influential men and women of today's modern data center and telco world, supporting the infrastructure requirements of this new normal. But first, Jamie, let's talk about you. We're always talking about our guests and your clients and other interesting things. But I think our our, our viewers, listeners would be interested to know, how did you get into the uh, marketing and media world? Like what was a young Jamie Scotto doing in her 20s to kind of build up her brand and her career like what was that like ah a little bit of luck a lot of uh late nights studying up i guess uh in short i was uh going to nyu for my uh, graduate degree in writing and um i was writing my thesis and my friends that uh, i lived with uh were like you need to go out like come Come for a drink with us. Like you need to get off, you know, this writing this book and go. And uh, and so I actually, uh, when I was uh, sipping a cocktail at this bar, I sat down right next to a gal who was hiring for MSNBC, and she was hiring writers. And my friends introduced me as a writer, and I remember thinking, oh, I don't know if you can call me a writer, like you know, big big names, Shakespeare. That, that's a writer. I'm just Jamie. Um, but um, but it kind of um, uh, it was an upward spiral from there. I was uh, writing for MSNBC. I was a journalist there, got really interested in the journalistic perspective. And then my next move was um, to go into PR. I knew I wanted to be representing the companies, pitching their news to, to the news, uh, to the news broadcasters. And, uh, and I found myself at Telex where I was head of marketing and PR. Um, and that got me into our industry. And then once, once I understood that this is this core network infrastructure that powers all of our communications, all the ways that we stay safe and secure, all of our economies, our, our um, ways of uh, entertaining and educating and learning, I just, I was hooked and, uh, and uh, decided, hey, what I did for Telex, I could do for one or two more logos. And that started JSA in 2005, 17 years wow. ago. Wow, 17 years. Oh, That's yeah. amazing. What a great story. My main takeaway is spend more time at bars talking to strangers. Yeah, exactly. Also get go to amazing graduate school programs. But yes, well, enough <laughs> about that. But that was fascinating I, to hear the story. Let's get on with our incredible guest. Yeah, actually, uh, who wants to talk about uh, me? I have, uh, <laughs> especially when in the wings, we have the most amazing speaker, uh, friend. I'm so blessed to say he's also one of our contributing authors for Greener Data. Uh, but with me today, please welcome Mr. Brad Meissner. He's the product manager for Global Large Diesel Generators at Kohler. Welcome, Brad. So I was actually really excited to talk about plumbing, but uh, we can talk about large diesel generators <laughs> too. Uh, very, very much interwork, but just kidding. Uh, you must get that all the time <laughs> mm -hmm. at Kohler. But um, your background is actually in engineering, as is mine, I have a double E, and you've worked in lots of engineering projects uh, you know, outside the data center space from, I'm seeing conveyor belts, I heard, solar panels, control systems, uh, maybe, uh, you, you know, uh, Kohler bathroom installation. I don't know. What, what else do you have going on outside in your past? And how does that relate to our sector, data center? And what, what are some of the commonalities when you think about engineering and design thinking and, uh, and that kind of thing? Hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. Um, Jamie, it's always great to be with you, Evan. Um, first time meeting you, fantastic um, to be here. So, so thank you. Um, as I jump into your question here, um, first of all, yes, I'm on the, the power side of the, the Kohler business and uh, it's very much a, a B2B um, market for us and not as familiar with uh, to most as our plumbing products, um, but we're actually the third largest uh, standby power producer in, in the world. 
Um, wow. So you have lots of expertise in this space. And as I jump into your question then about, you know, what's the difference between engineering products for a data center customer versus some of the other things I've done? You know, the really big difference is how technical and how much knowledge the data center space has. Uh, when you think about that customer base, uh, they know the product as well as you do. They have lots of hands-on experience. And uh, they also come to the table with a lot of preconceived notions of it. So um, I just try to educate the customer. You know, it's a different type of education that you're trying to give. Um, but ultimately, it really ends up in this really collaborative space of how we uh, develop product, how we deploy generators, and uh, becomes very intentional about how we do things, which is, uh, which is a lot of fun. How it's uh, similar, though, is there's just this common thread across engineering about innovation and continuous improvement and uh, always trying to strive to bring a new capability to the market. And uh, that's always the fun part of it for, uh, for engineers like myself. Oh, wow. All right. I, I got to ask. I'm going to ask the big elephant in the room question, I guess. Um, of course, you, Brad, are in charge of the environmental policy and sustainability for Kohler's diesel generator division. And so on one hand, you have the enviable position of being one of the biggest suppliers of emergency backup power for data centers around the world, huge. And then on the other hand, the technology you're championing is well notorious for its negative ecological impact. So how do you reconcile the two? How does Kohler approach these seemingly opposing goals? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, the, the environmental impact of a diesel engine, you think of an old dump truck going down the road and this big plume of black smoke behind it. And you can just see the, uh, the environmental impact from it. Right. Um, describing my dad's Volvo back then. <laughs> that was uh, exactly that. But I think we've come a long way, right? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, if you, if you look today on the on-road truck technology, uh, you no longer are seeing that black smoke coming out of it. It's much cleaner. And a lot of the technology that we're rolling into our, our diesel engines for our generators are all things that have been applied to on-road um, truck technology. So certainly this delicate balance between um, the long-standing history of diesel engines and the emission and pollutions that come from it, um, but it's also the most um, reliable and um, power dense and easily deployed product in the market um, for any of these data center sites. So it's absolutely critical to the infrastructure um, for everything that Jamie described there of you know, powering our entertainment, our life safety systems, um, all of that. Um, so a lot of it you know, comes back to that education piece, um, but that's also making sure that we're striving for you know, better and better with the product. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do from a continuous improvement standpoint, a lot of things that we've done um, you look at our engine technology over the past uh, 20 years, starting back in at like 2000, um, and the improvements that we made to reduce pollutant emissions, and the things that we continue to do today around introducing after-treatment systems onto our product and looking at alternative fuels for uh, the diesel engines that um, are going to significantly reduce our carbon emissions that I'm going to talk a lot about later in this podcast. So, Interesting. And speaking of education, I understand you're enrolled in an MBA program at Purdue, one of our great institutions. Uh, I'm curious, in, you know, in a modern program like yours, do they talk about sustainability and environmental impact and the way, you know, they're educating future business leaders? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and, and thanks for pulling in the, the piece about me going back to school. I always love talking about it. Um, so certainly we're talking about environmental aspects. We're talking about social aspects. And really this idea that businesses have to be more than just you know, a, a vessel for creating a product and you know, making money. Um, we have to be, you know, every single stakeholder that our business impacts has to be thought of and considered. So environmental impacts through our products, um, through our supply chains, through our uh, manufacturing processes, all of that needs to be considered. And really what the teaching is focusing around is how do you balance these demands as a future leader uh, of business and of industry? Um, so there's no like sustainability course per se that we're taking, um, you know, as an MBA, um, but it's certainly kind of interwoven into everything that we're doing now in business. You know, um, it's also thinking about uh, our, our chapters in, in Greener Data and uh, your experience, so international and, and Kohler's reach in the data center world, of course, global. Um, how do you see that the issue of environmental protection really differ from market to market and, and country to country. What's that like? 
Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, so when I think about sustainability as a whole within uh, the power generation industry and even in the data center industry, as the parallels, um, a lot of it starts out of two locations around the globe. One is California and in the US, and the other one is Europe. And those are really the two thought leaders in the space. And what happens is as those regions adapt new standards, drive new technologies, new requirements, the other areas quickly look and start to pick up on those and those ideas. And a great example is uh, one that came out of California recently. Uh, it affects both the, uh, the generators as well as the data center industry. Um, so right at the end of uh, 2020, it was like a Christmas gift for all of us. Uh, the Bay Area of California, which is the Silicon Valley region, you know, lots of data centers sitting there. Um, they released new regulation that requires all diesel generators being installed in that region um, to be tier four uh, compliant. So basically near zero pollution. And what that did is it showed that demonstrated the industry that yes, this can be done. And now you see areas like Phoenix, Virginia, all of them starting to gravitate towards this requirement. And that's usually what you see. You see it either come out of Europe or out of California. Uh, they institute these, these new standards and new requirements um, that drives the, the industry forward towards a more sustainable future. Awesome. And your co-authored chapter in the new Greener Data book by uh, JSA is about a lot of emerging uh, tech, really exciting stuff in the new green tech world uh, from hydrogen fuel cells to, you know, sustainable fuel sources and more. So of all those, those emerging technologies, what innovation do you think is most promising for our space in the data center? Yeah, yeah, it's a great, uh, we kind of set it up as this evolutionary revolutionary because we're pursuing technologies uh, in parallel. And when we think of what's the revolutionary stuff on the horizon, that's um, typically thought of as like batteries or hydrogen fuel cells. And then the more, the more incremental that, uh, that um, evolutionary type changes is things that we're doing to, uh, to internal combustion engines like diesel generators, um, that we can start implementing today and, and much faster. And, uh, you know, when we think about the, the biggest things that are happening around the, the diesel space, um, it's, it's really around alternative fuels. And uh, there's um, two, two words out in the market for it that we're seeing a lot in the data center space. Uh, it's HVO and renewable diesel. Uh, HVO is typically talked about in Europe. Um, renewable diesel is the, is the name for it in, uh, in the North America region. Um, but they're really the same product. And what it's doing is it's taking and capturing waste streams of uh, like animal byproducts, uh, any, basically any, any byproducts of making food, um, which is very plentiful. And it's uses a process uh, mixing with hydrogen and uh, you end up with this really revolutionary fuel where you have um, basically net zero a carbon impact from it because you're taking that carbon impact from the waste stream, repurposing it into a fuel. And that's where the, the renewable name comes from. Um, so you think about how we reduce carbon at a data center. Um, it's a really revolutionary technology that's going to drive to near zero carbon um, at a data center and uh, without having to use these revolutionary technologies. That's one that's certainly there. Um, the other one is just advancements in engine technology. I think I've been talking about, and then I think we'll talk about it more later, but there's this, there's this push in the space also to think differently. How do we operate these generators differently? How do we deploy them differently in order to reduce our, our footprint from emissions from carbon? When we talk about those revolutionary pieces, when we talk about batteries and fuel cells, um, there's a reason why they're seen as revolutionary. Um, they're not ready you know, today uh, to, to replace a generator on a data center site. Um, batteries, that's very large, the footprint it's gonna require um, when you consider the entire life cycle of a battery, it actually creates a lot of carbon to create that and then also to recycle it. Um, short period of time that can provide backup power. So there's these hurdles that it has to overcome. Um, hydrogen fuel cells is probably the more promising of the two technologies, in my opinion. Um, but the issue with the hydrogen fuel cells is your source of hydrogen. So today, hydrogen is primarily made from natural gas, and it actually creates a lot of carbon. Um, when I'm comparing it to a diesel generator, it's both actually the same from a carbon perspective. Uh, when you factor in the uh, renewable fuel, it's actually cleaner to run your, your diesel generator. Um, 
as more renewable technologies come available for our energy grid, think solar, wind, electric, or uh, like hydroelectric dams, those types of um, technologies will drive us more towards a process called electrolysis, which will allow us to have green hydrogen. But you just think of what it's going to take to build out an infrastructure around that. Think of how long it took to build out infrastructure of all the gas stations and trucks that transport our diesel today. We had to build all of that up for hydrogen. So um, the earliest we would really see a green hydrogen revolution is going to be 2030. And even then, uh, I think there's a lot of um, question marks still that need to be answered around it. So very important. You know, Kohler is attacking both sides, that revolutionary piece and the evolutionary piece and uh, continuing to drive the best products out into the market that we can. Uh, so fascinating and, and actually speaks to how your Cola brand just so much more than what we might uh, initially um, um, think about. And we, we think Kohler is so innovative, a hundred year brand, right? I mean, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But um, getting back to thinking differently in the chapter, uh, Greener Data that you authored, you called it a sustainable thinking, you know, really wanting data center designers to, to adopt to this sustainable thinking to, to move forward. So tell us a little bit about what is sustainable thinking? What are some examples of it? Why is it important? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I mentioned how uh, knowledgeable the data center operators are and these data center engineers are. At the same time, they're also very risk averse. Uh, Sean Farney is one of my, my mentors in the space a long time. Um, participant in it. And uh, he always talks about how hard it is to get people to think differently and think new. And, and one of the reasons I, I think that is, and he's reinforced this with me, is a lot of these operators are incentivized by uptime. So why, why think differently? If I'm incentivized by uptime, why try something new? And it's kind of breaking that mold and really thinking of sustainability as right there with as important or even maybe being more important uh, than these uptime pieces, which might, might be crazy to, to for some people to think about. Um, but taking the, these safe risks within, uh, within how we do things uh, in order to be more sustainable, how we uh, operate a data center site, how we exercise our equipment, how we build our equipment, how many pieces of equipment we put on a site for redundancy, um, all of those things that we can drive towards. And so what Kohler's kind of done is mapped out this I think of it like a staircase. So this is how much um, pollutant I have today. I want to step that down um, by taking these incremental steps of how I test things, of how I, how I build my, my product. And we've kind of roadmapped this out, uh, much like we do like our product roadmaps of just these incremental improvements that we can do and start deploying. And uh, we're finding industry leaders and thought leaders um, throughout the world who are interested in doing this with us. And uh, we're starting to put some of these um, these ideas actually into practice and testing them so we can prove them out before we um, take it widespread. Fantastic. And have you put together a sort of 10 or year or long-term view of where you see diesel engine tech being in relation to, you know, data center environmental issues? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it it kind of goes back to that, that incremental, uh, that, that uh, evolutionary piece versus, um, um, the, the revolutionary piece, you know, one of the things that we're going to see happen with internal combustion engines. So today it's primarily all diesel. Um, but you think about an internal combustion engine, it can run on natural gas, it can run on uh, hydrogen. So there is also this roadmap, this process of taking our engines and evolving them into uh, hydrogen, which will allow us to run, um, you know, zero emissions, just like a fuel cell would. Um, but then how do we take these assets that are sitting on data center sites, um, right? In 20 years from now, um, when fuel cells or other technologies are developed, we're still gonna have these assets that are still very viable on these data center sites that we need to convert. And that's a, a roadmap to also get those converted. Yeah, amazing. Cool. amazing. I'll tell you, I, you know, Brad, I speak to you and I, I just, I feel the futurist uh, uh, coming out. Uh, you're just, uh, you know, um, you're you're mapping out our future, and and uh, and we really appreciate your your brilliance, your insight. Um, so let's go ahead and get to the 
the more uh, ah, relaxed, fun, rapid fire section yep. of, of our Data Movers podcast. This is where we just ask you some goofy questions and get a little bit more and a little bit more data on, on mm-hmm. you know, what makes Brad tick and your, uh, especially on his off time. So let's start with what's your favorite dessert? Oh, great question. Uh, so my, my mother-in-law is a fantastic cook. She's also very giving. Um, and she asked me every year for my birthday, what I want for a birthday cake. And, uh, she makes this fantastic eclair tort, which if you don't know, it's like this mixture of graham crackers and I don't know if it's like vanilla pudding, but it's, it's very, very good. And that's, that is absolutely my favorite. Uh, and every mother-in-law right now is thinking, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the guy right there. Yep. Like, perfect in-law. Yes. Awesome. So what's the first thing you do in the morning after waking up besides eating the eclair tort? Uh, <laughs> what, what, what's next? Oh man, if I could wake up every morning with a clear tart next to my bed, <laughs> oh, I would just be in heaven. I, I should uh, suggest that to my wife. Um, <laughs> as I think about it, probably the thing I do, because it's always to an alarm that me and my wife both wake up to. I basically say that I say the same thing every morning. I ask her how she slept. Mm-hmm. So that's probably the most boring thing. But uh, yep, yeah, that's, it's always interesting the response I get to. Yeah. <laughs> And you have a really good marriage. Like, that's pretty cool. Um, so when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? So I wanted to be a mechanic. Um, so I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer. So I kind of do that uh, nice. by background. Of course, I moved into marketing now, which is like the dark side. Um, but yeah, I wanted to be hands-on, uh, fix cars, fix equipment, those types of things. But um, yeah, my parents, I have a knack for uh, math and science. So they pushed me to go to, uh, to engineering school, which has been a great fit for me. Yeah. Well, there's always a second career. We need more mechanics. So uh, <laughs> you never know. Uh, I understand you sing karaoke. Uh, what, what's your favorite karaoke song? Uh, I absolutely do not sing karaoke. <laughs> as, you <can> probably, <laughs> as, as you can probably tell, I'm not the, I, I'm an engineer, right? So I'm very monotone. I'm not uh, comfortable with like, um, being up in front of a whole group of people, especially making a fool out of myself. So uh, I have no talents in, uh, in in music. I can't play an instrument. I can't. That's uh, why you sing. need to sing karaoke so we can make fun <laughs> no, of you. That's... No, no, I've got, right. uh, I've got. got We're going to have a karaoke a episode, voice. Jamie. We're all going to sing karaoke. <laughs> I'll get ratings. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. They'll be like, turn it up. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, Brad. It's like, you know, no one wants to hear me on a mic trying to, trying to sing. Um, but, um, uh, so what is your favorite superhero? Uh, Iron Man, oh, right? He's a brilliant engineer. Yes. He has this fantastic suit that gets to fly around the world. That's, that's always been, uh, been cool to me. Magical. Good power, choice. Of course. I can see this, mm-hmm. all the correlations. Yes. Yep. <laughs> what about pets? Any, do you have any, want any? Uh, I don't trying to think if my uh, daughter still has her goldfish. Um, Nope. Right now I've got uh, two daughters um, that keep me totally busy. So I do not need a a puppy in the house or anything like that. (laughs) Good, good, good strategy. Keep it that way as long as you can. Trust me. (laughs) And all right. My last fun facts question. What is your favorite place on earth? Uh, Colorado. Um, Mm -hmm. I love the mountains. Uh, I love the snowboard. I love the fact that, uh, and fun fact about Denver, I think they get like 310 days of sun a year and you have the mountains right there. It's just this, uh, this great place. Um, a lot of active people, things like that. Everybody's friendly. So yep, my favorite place on earth. If family didn't live in Wisconsin, I would be in Colorado. Nice. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Brad. Really interesting. I had no idea that there was so much innovation happening in diesel generation and power generation. It's like, really blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Brad, again, thank you so much for your time, your energy, um, your your brilliance. We so appreciate you. And I'm so excited uh, to, uh, to also be able to promote your chapter in Greener Data. And guys, if you enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast as much as we did, go ahead and check us out at jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming episodes being released every other Wednesday morning. Yeah, and follow us on Twitter at Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell and follow Jamie on TikTok for her karaoke uh, songs. And uh, we'll, we'll chat to you later. And as always, stay safe, think green, and happy networking.